Well, again, welcome to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our good friend, John Obolewski. How are you today, John? Jim, I'm doing great. I am so glad to be with you today. Right on. This is podcast number what here today? It's 87? 87, yeah. 87. Wowzer. That's awesome. Thank you again for the 86 that came before this and uh, Lord willing, the, the 860 that come after this. <laughs> and we appreciate your wisdom. You just have a great way of saying profound things as if they're simple. And it's very memorable and inspirational, easy to teach, easy to learn. So God Thanks. bless you, my friend. Thanks for sharing. What, what are we talking about today? Well, this, this one's going to be kind of personal today. Um, uh, the, uh, the title of it is Emerging from the Fog of COVID-19. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the time this podcast comes out, it will have been about two months uh, since I tested positive for COVID. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I realize the experience I'm going to describe to you in a minute it is not the worst case of COVID in history. Yeah. Um, many have had it much worse than I. Uh, many have lost their lives to it. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure mine wasn't the mildest case either. And, and uh, thankfully, I'm, I'm feeling much better today. Um, the purpose of the pod today isn't to gain sympathy. It's to share what I learned going through this disease, this virus for a three-week stretch. And yeah. to increase, I want to increase our understanding as leaders, if, if that's possible today, about what it is and, and how we should understand it, Jim, and maybe how we should react and respond based on that. How's right. that sound? Yeah, I think it's good because I, I, it is such a, it can be controversial. It isn't, but it can be such a controversial. It's not this, it's that, it's not that, it's this. And I, right. I think talking from your heart to people that haven't had it, so they can't really understand what you know, yep. or those who have had it and are now trying to kind of work their way, you know, back into what is normal, uh, and, and the, the struggles there. So tell us, tell us about it. So I, I think most of the time, unless we walk through something, Jim, we don't understand it very well. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we take guesses, but we don't often get it. And then in COVID no different. You know, prior to my, my battle with it, when someone told me they had the virus and that they were having, you know, fairly severe symptoms, I felt compassion for them. Right. But I really didn't understand what they were facing. Well, in the middle of my own struggle, several things became very clear to me yeah. about it. And, I, and I, I think it would do leaders well to take some notes on, on this. We'll put, yeah. be providing show notes, but just to write yeah. some of these down, I'll just jump right in if that's okay yeah, with you. Please. Here's the first thing I, I discovered is that COVID is an isolating sickness. Right. You know, upon receiving the news uh, of the positive test, an automatic two-week isolation begins. Yeah. You're cut off from personal contact with those you love the most. And there is this lonely journey yeah. that, that starts, you know, and, and the problem with isolation, there's lots of problems with isolation, but it has this uncanny capacity, Jim, to bend your thinking, right? To magnify fear. And, uh, you know, I'm introverted, but I, I need people right. to be well, to be healthy. So <clears throat> what happened is I, you just grit your teeth and you tell yourself, and at the end of two weeks, you'll get out of COVID jail. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's so different, right? In the past, when, when you were sick, you know, people would come and visit you and pray for right. you and lay right. hands on you and encourage you, hold your hand. And the isolation of COVID for me was just this strange and unique phenomenon. Right. Well, and I've heard you feel so miserable. It's like, well, I, I could use a day off. I'd watch TV. TV, I'd catch up on my sports. I like, you don't, you don't feel like breathing from what I'm hearing. Like it, everything hurts. Um, you're foggy. You're, you know, the fever is raging. It's you you don't have, you lose your sense of smell or taste and, and appetite goes with that. Sometimes the medications can be very debilitating. They have their own side effects and symptoms. So I, I've heard many people say I've never, I've had the flu for 24 hours or 48 hours. This is sicker than I've ever been. And it lasts longer than any sickness I've ever had. So Laura, my wife, she tested positive about three days before I did. Yeah, um, She was pretty sick for three days, but it was like a light switch for her. She just yeah. bounced back day four. I mean, she felt yeah. so much better. Mine yeah. was a totally different experience. So yeah. day one through seven, Jim, 
So here's the second thing. It's, it's isolating, but it's intrusive. It's an intrusive right. force. Day, day one through seven, every part of my body hurt. Yeah. The bottom of my feet hurt. Yeah. Top of my head hurt. Wow. And everything in between, it just hurt. And when the fever would surge, and I had fever for about seven or eight days, yeah. the pain was exacerbated. And I'm pretty sure I've never been sicker hmm. as an adult. And, yeah. and it, it, it felt like this, Jim, it just felt like this intruding force just took my body over yeah. and, and do, it was doing whatever it wanted to me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an intrusive uh, problem. It's an intrusive yeah. sickness. A buddy of mine did, did two tours in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. He said, I'd never been so afraid in my life as when I had COVID. Wow. It was, it was the most, any, he was in the ICU and on the edge of, of needing mechanical help breathing. And then that's when I really turned around and he, and he he's, you know, working his way back to health again. But he said, I've, and there, that's what he says. The reason was when they shot at us, because she back, when they yeah. maneuvered, we maneuver, you know, we could lay out mines, we could whatever. But said, this time it was, it was this invisible and he used that word intrusive. It was, yeah. it was not polite. It was a trespasser over which I had no control. And every day I woke up sicker than the day before. And I wondered how many more days can I wake up? Yep. And I can tap into that. And, and I think, again, I, the point here isn't for you to send me a sympathy note. I don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. The point is understand that many people who are suffering with COVID who are really struggling, they feel isolated and they feel like there, there's this intruder in their body that they can't, expel right. and it and it uh, and it really kind of leads to the next uh insight jim and the the third one and that's this that covid is an insidious force yeah you know um here's what i really wasn't ready for was the incredible mental and emotional struggle that came mm. along with the physical symptoms right um negative thoughts jim wanted to rule my day and mm. and if i would could be totally transparent here Often they did. Nice. Um, in some of those mo those dark moments, I could not find strength within me to fight back. Wow. You know, so here's some of the thoughts that were coming to me. You know, you're never going to get through this. Your life is over. You're going to die. And they attacked uh, viciously. And and it you know it made me wonder, Jim, if this is not just a a physical thing, a physical uh, sickness. I wonder, and I, I have no medical proof of this at all, so please understand. Right. But I wondered, does this thing go after your brain chemistry? Right. Does it go after the neurotransmitters at the same time it's striking the other parts of your body? You know, the physical stress of COVID is enough by itself, but the right. mental stress, I was not ready for. And I haven't right. heard too many people talk about that. Right. Right. It's funny what you're what you're describing is actually torture. We're, we're going to create uh, an undetermined amount of pain for an undetermined amount of time yep. and the hope of removing hope so that so that you you basically do what we want you to do. You submit to our will. You have no will of your own left at the end of our our treatment of you. That's uh, I imagine you're like, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Just don't just don't hurt me anymore at some right. point. Yeah, That's right. and, and it just kept hurting you. And so if you haven't had a battle with COVID, you know, I would just encourage you to keep these three things, these three things in mind. You know, the, the isolating factor, the intrusive factor, the insidious nature of it and what it yeah. does to your thinking. You know, yeah. the people who you lead who are struggling with COVID are likely dealing with at least one of those yeah. uh, experiences, maybe all three. Um, yeah. You know, Jim, the thing that helped me the most right. while I was sick was the prayer and supporting and encouragement yeah. that came from my wife, uh, my mm -hmm. kids, my siblings, and close friends like you. Yeah. Um, you know, I was reading my Bible a few weeks ago in, in Philippians, and Paul says in Philippians 4, he says, it was good of you to share my troubles. Yeah, interesting phrase. It takes on a new meaning, doesn't it? It does, and that's exactly what these wonderful people in my life yeah. did. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I needed. Here's what I didn't need. Yeah. I didn't need to hear a political position. <laughs> and I still don't. 
I, I didn't need to hear uninformed opinions. Yeah. Like this thing is just like a bad flu. Right. Right. You know, I heard, I heard that a few times while I was sick and it, and Jim, it, it felt marginalizing. Yeah. Right. More like, isolation. Yeah. Right. Like this is no oh. big deal. Get over it. You cry baby. Um, <laughs> well, it was a big deal to me. Yeah. And, and it is to many others. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't need to hear two sides arguing and not listening to each other. Right. Here's what I needed. And I received dedicated, consistent prayer, words of encouragement and perspective right. from those who loved me the most to help me see God's perspective in all this. Some of the most encouraging words I heard, Jim, were you're going to make it. Yeah. I right. know. I it. This. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and that's really what helped. And, and it, and, and I, I've just been thinking about this, you know, not for weeks and weeks, but just, in, in the last several days, it makes me wonder, Jim, isn't, isn't the situation that we're in today with, let's just use COVID as an example. Yeah. Isn't this where the church should shine? It is where the church should shine. Yeah. You know, in moments of national crisis. Yeah. And I want to challenge anybody listening today, you know, instead of posturing or politicizing, demanding rights, what about praying yeah. and pleading with God yeah. to remove this plague from our country? Right, right. You know, what about praying with fervor and concern for those who are suffering to recover? Yeah. Um, you know, what about, what about asking God to give divine wisdom to our medical community yeah. to help them figure this thing out? Yeah. You know, instead of hubris and, condes and condescension, what about more humility yeah. and compassion so i mean that's just kind of like my stream of consciousness yeah about yeah. this and the whole point is to inform today yes like just want to inform and inspire yeah. those that are listening yeah i it's funny this is not the first plague that the church has faced in history not, not even in my lifetime right I, I you know it's not the first politically charged or media motivated strongly opinionated you I think back to the AIDS virus in the 80s and 90s and yeah. um you know I I had a strong opinion until I met someone who was dying of AIDS mm -hmm. and it was terrifying absolutely yeah. terrifying what that poor kid was going through and it it changed my almost my old testament thinking about judgment to mm -hmm. my new testament compassion of what the needs of, of a community that Jesus died to save were going through yeah and uh you know, it's, it's just, it's just impossible to be that guy once you meet somebody that's gone through it. So right. thanks, thanks for inviting us into a horrible season of your life. And I think one of the things that I take away from this conversation is, uh, you know, my, my opinions are okay, but, but if I'm, if all I have is opinions, I'm not salt and light. I'm just wind. Yeah. You know? Like, like the church has too much wind. I, I'll, I'll just, I'll say it from my own perspective. Right. The people of my church, I don't mind that they have wind, but if they don't have any salt and have any light, all they have are opinions, then all they are is wind. They're actually a part of the storm. They're not the solution to the storm. So, And so, Jim, if I could kind of wrap it up just to look yeah. at my thought, if that's okay. Yeah, please. Yeah. I'm not, an ex I'm not an expert on COVID. Right. I just have an experience. And I want that experience to be instructive for me moving forward to shape my heart, to shape my thinking to shape my behavior. So yeah. I look more like Jesus in moments of crisis and less like John. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, to become a better person for having gone through a battle. And I, and, and I hope in some way, you know, that my struggle with this will help our listeners in some small way to yeah. do the same. And, and right. so that's kind of my final thought on it today. Even that, just right. I, I dropped a casserole on your door. Hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, you're going to make it through this. Yes. Hey, do you need anything? We're here for you. Those are very simple acts. Those right. are not, those aren't leaping over walls and erecting monuments. That's, that's just care. Yep. And, absolutely. Uh, when the pain is greatest, the care is, is the most needed and the most effective. So yep. thank you. John. Thanks for sharing. And I, and I, no one thinks you're a crybaby. You know, no one thinks that you're, you're a, what you call yourself a wimp or whatever. Like no one thinks. Yeah, that. Never. <laughs> I, we are, we are proud to know you and thank you for sharing really your your pain with us today and how that makes us better people for having listened. So 
Um, God bless you, our dear listeners, man. Get, get out there and do something good today. Hey, we can we can curse the darkness or we can light a candle. And uh, Jesus was a candle lighter. So yeah. go be one too. And uh, we are praying for you and we're cheering for you. And we're one day closer to this, the promise of, of rain, you know? So God bless you as you continue to lead from a life.